1987, a Ford engineer comes to you and tells you about this cat, Jack Roush, who is going to start a cup team. Were you familiar with Jack at the time, and was Mark Martin also a part of the package? Mark was driving that Bush car with Hoosier Tires help, and they kept it just a. I lived like seven miles above Level Cross, and the shop was like three miles above Level Cross. So I'd go by and see Mark and see what's going on, because I had a lot of respect for Mark. I, I thought he had what it took. So I'd go by and check him out and all that. Well, we had gotten together, and we had actually tried to put together a couple of programs with other people on our own. Because at that time, a million and a half dollars was plenty of money to do it. You know, you'd, you'd be just fine if you did all the right things. A million and a half. A million and a half. So <laughs> I was leaving Michigan. I was in the parking lot getting ready to go, and, and a Ford engineer named Paul Giltman, who worked for, was helping uh, Harry and Air's team with mm-hmm. Kale. Uh, I thought he did a fantastic job because I, I knew what springs were running and, and shock absorbers. And I thought, man, that's some kind of revolutionary stuff they're doing that this Ford guy knows what he's talking about. So he stopped me and he said, hey, do you have any interest in working on a Ford team with a really hooked in Ford guy? I said, yeah, sure, whatever we need to do. Because Fords were, you know, uh, Robert Yates was running fast and Harry yeah. Nair's cars were running fast and it looked like... Ford engine program worked well, and the banjo cars were just wonderful at the time, and the bodies were slick. I said, yeah, 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 let's do it. One day, Jack Roush called me and said, hey, think about if you want to do this. Jack had spoken with Gary Nelson, and I th- yeah, Gary was still racing at the time, and yeah. they wanted, he wanted Gary Nelson. Right. And Gary said, no, but I got a guy that worked with me uh, that I think you should talk to, and he's, it was Robin Pemberton, who I grew up with in New York. And... Uh, Jack made a call to Robin, and Robin said, well, yeah, I don't want to really step off and do that on my own, but if you'll go hire my buddy Steve. So I was actually like the third choice. And uh, we all got together at the Holiday Inn about by the airport in Greensboro and didn't really have a giant plan, but just knew what, what Jack wanted to do and how much influence he had with Ford Motor Company, and Ford was really signed up with it. The Ford SVO people came down on the airplane with them, and... Uh, we just started. What was your role? We bought 24 acres of land in a building in Liberty, North Carolina. So there was a lot to be done there. So I said, Rob, you just worry about the race cars and I'll get everything else up and running, buying equipment and, you know, just all kinds of things, scheduling wind tunnel tests and stuff like that. But Robin and I talked about the race cars together all the time in addition to that. But it was a very interesting situation because Ford was going to spend a lot of money with Jack, and Jack had a huge reputation already as far back as Gap and Roush and then his protofab race cars, uh, uh, IMSA cars and Trans Am cars. So, you know, this thing had to work very well. But So the Ford engineers kind of kept an eye on us, and uh, they'd come down to visit, and they'd go back up home and tell SVO, well, their building isn't big enough and they're not really ready. And boy, I'm not, you know, they need to be in Mooresville. And oh, it was rough. And then we went to the wind tunnel and got in there with our first super speedway car. And uh, the Ford guy there, unbeknownst to me, called Jack and told him what a terrible race car these guys had put together. And we've been worried about these guys anyway, you know. Wow. Okay. So Jack calls me, he says, what's going on? I said, nothing, man, we're fine. I said, I'm looking at the numbers. We're, you know, we're not cutting flips. That's not the greatest speedway car that's ever been in here, but it's in the top three of the Fords, you know. Well, I didn't know that, you know. So, so that kind of started a situation where people that Jack had known for a long time were telling him maybe we didn't know what we were doing. And I had the job of telling him, no, we're good. So that would... You know, if you put yourself in Jack's shoes, he's like, man, I barely know this guy. Maybe he's just blowing smoke, and I've known these guys since 1965, right. yeah. and, you know, I, I trust them. But luckily for me, those guys were kind of wrong. <laughs> but, but, it, it, but it did start a situation where Jack was uneasy. He wasn't signed up on everything I did, you know. Uh, it, it, was, it was interesting. And then Jack invited Robin and I to go to the banquet, and... Yeah, I guess so. If we have to, he said, well, they're going to make a little announcement up there. We want you to be there. Okay. Well, we had planned on doing what 
you guys will remember Harry Rainier did at the time, you know, Daytona, skip Richmond and Rockingham, Atlanta, right. skip here, go there. No road racing, no short tracks, no miles, you know. So that's what we're doing. So that's what we're gearing up to do. So you're going into 88 expecting to run a limited schedule. Oh, we're, we're going into December expecting to run a, <laughs> <laughs> So we get up wow. there and they make this big announcement and we're like, do what now? Jack said, ah, yeah, I meant to say something about that, but, you know. So we just jumped through our butts and got it done. But that kind of got myself and Robin going, well, maybe we're not being told everything e either. So it got, you know yeah, what I mean, it got, yeah, a, yeah. it got a little rocky. You know, it, was, it made it tough for Jack and it made it tough for Robin and myself because he didn't know who, who to believe and we didn't know who to believe and we didn't know when the next shoe was going to fall, he, you know, so... So that kind of started everything off on a little bit of a wrong foot. Yeah. 1988, you don't win. No, no. How big a problem was that, or was that a problem? It wasn't so much that we didn't win. There was a lot of times we didn't even run good. You, you know, the, okay. hi yeah. the highlight of our year was one, uh, one pole at Dover in the spring or maybe the fall, I don't know. But we went to Sears Point because Jack was a road racer. You yeah. Know? And he brought Lee White, who ran all that road racing up there, and later went to work for TRD. G great guy. Great racer. And uh, Jack says, I'm bringing Lee out with me, and he's going to help you with the road race car. I said, man, that's cool. Whatever help we need. So we went out there, and we went out and ran and ran and ran and ran, ran. Yeah, how is it? It's good. All right, I want you to put Lee, do whatever Lee tells you to do. Okay. So we had to take some front weight out of it, and, you know, it's got to be 50-50 and even side to side and all that stuff and go out there and knock yourself out. So we ran, like, a second slower. And Jack said, what's going on? And Mark said, uh, he, he, you know, he didn't want to say anything. Jack's the new kid. He was tickled to death to have the opportunity, he, you know. And as much as I was third in line to be the crew chief, Mark originally was, like, fifth or sixth in line. Jack's choice as a driver, you know. So he's not going to rock the boat. And uh, finally he says, it's just too loose. And Lee said, well, that, it can't be. That's how we run all our cars. And I said, Lee, you got way more downforce. And the biggest thing is your rear tires are twice as wide as ours yeah. compared to your fronts. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Your fronts are similar, but your rears are huge. And he said, well, just switch it back if you think it's right, if it's not right. So we switched it back, went back to running really, really good. And from that point on, we were a good little road race team for, for Jack. But that was one more thing where Jack brought a guy that he really respected, and we really respected, and the proof wasn't in the pud, and it's like, well, maybe these guys are messing with me. He, he, you know, it's like, no, we're not messing with you. So you got me and Robin over here going, man, wonder why you, we even have to do this. We know what we're doing. You got Jack going, well, I've proved I know what I'm doing because I've got all these Trans Am and IMSA titles. Yeah. So, you know, it was one more thing where you kind of, you didn't really clang together. We didn't have a fist fight or scream and shout, but it's like, like, man, every time we turn around, you were getting dinged in the head. And both sides are saying that.